Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. Stand girded with truth is the title of this devotion. Stand girded with truth. You see, what gives you a stand, what gives you a place where you take a position, what motivates you? What drives you to take certain positions? Sometimes, folks, we stand for things that is not worth standing for. It's better to just be sweet and to be amicable and, and to be willing even when, okay, I personally don't think, don't need, don't want, no, but we're gracious, we're sweet. But there's gotta be a stand in you. One man, I'll not forget, he started talking evil to me about his wife. In the car, he was sitting next to me and he was starting to talk evil about her. And he could feel in me, my heart just closed real gently. And he could feel it. Not that I said anything, I didn't look in an unkind way. He could just feel my spirit closed. And he said to me, all you ever want to do pastors love people. He meant that in an offended way. I thought it was a compliment. And what I said to him, I cannot go where you go. I can't go there. I can't go there. And that way of thinking, that way of talking, I can't. But you can come with me. You can come with me in the road of forgiveness, in the road of love, that believes the best and always hopes and never fails. And we all make our choice, folks, what we stand for. And I'd like to charge you today. Stand girded with the truth that what motivates and holds you to be upright, to, to be honest, to be wholehearted, to be sincere, to be truthful, to not have hidden thoughts and hidden feelings that you hide through shame. No, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 1, we have renounced all hidden thoughts and underhandedness and methods and arts that people hide through shame. No. I will not be deceitful, I will not. I love being wholehearted, sincere, to be honest, to be upright, to be truthful, to be honest, to be upright. That is godly. And that gives you a stand and people can feel it in you. They can feel it if you're swindling them in your thoughts, in your feelings, and you're not being honest, you're not being upright, you're being secretive. They can feel it. Whatever motivates you to be that way, no. No, don't take a stand for what's wrong. Take a stand for what's right. Stand girded with truth. Can I hear an amen? Jesus says here in John, in Ephesians 6 verse 14, or excuse me, the scripture says, Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Your waist has to do with what really you hold together. Soldiers would wear their their swords uh, uh, on their on their belt, and and mechanics or uh, plumbers or carpenters they often wear a lot of their 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 tools around their belt. It is such an, an important. It, like Peter would say, gird up the spirit of your mind. He says in 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 the scripture there, First Peter or Second Peter, gird up. In other words. Arm yourself with the right way of thinking, right? But he's using the belt as an example. Paul had a, had a, like a belt around his waist and, and, uh, and the prophet took that belt and bound himself and the man who's girded by this shall be bound, he said. And he was giving a prophetic message, but Paul was not deterred because he understood no matter what awaited him, it was the will of the Father for him to go that way. So no matter what was the cost of doing it, and God had trained him in this through many hardships to not be frightened by the hardships that come along in the mission. And I think that hardships can be something that trains us and hardens us to be able to endure hardship like a good soldier, as the scripture says. But I believe whatever causes you to take a stand, Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the truth. You see, take a stand girded with truth. 
that Jesus, that spirit of truth in you becomes so forceful, so powerful inside of you that you cannot bear deception. Folks, you're only vulnerable to deception unless if you're not convinced of the truth. But as Jesus said in John 15 verse 26, when the helper, the Holy Spirit has come, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. You cannot continue in deception and bear the spirit of truth. The two are contradictory. You cannot live in the consistent manifestation of the spirit in you, bearing witness of Christ in you and with you, if you insist to stand for falsehood, to stand for deception, or stand for what's wrong. You will see the conflict and you make your choice, what you stand for. I choose by the love of the Savior and the love of my Savior working this in me to stand girded with truth. I choose that, I choose it. And to be a man of truth is what God longs for in each and every one of us, to be a person of truth to be a person of uprightness, of honesty, of sincerity, of wholeheartedness, that we have, I personally find the safest place for me is to live in the light where nothing is hidden, where Satan cannot get a grip on me because I'm continuously cleansed with the blood of Jesus. That's where I choose to live every day, according to 1 John chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. And I must live in that light where nothing is hidden. You have all of me. I don't have a secret life somewhere. I don't have another life. I don't go home and live like another person. I, I'm the same person at home as I'm here. And I'm not saying I'm perfect by saying these things. I have a lot to learn, folks. I keep growing. I choose to remain a learner. I choose to remain a learner. But I believe personally, friends, that the only way that we can succeed in this life is to continuously live in this spirit of truth that proceeds from the Father, that keeps bearing witness of Christ in us and with us. I need it every day. You know, when I say truth, Jesus said in John 18 to Pilate, the governor, he said to him, for this purpose I've come to bear witness of the truth. And Pilate said, what's truth? And walked off. What truth? The truth of the living reality, the living consciousness. Conscious, you're conscious of it. You perceive it, you recognize it, you acknowledge it of the Father and the Son through the Holy Spirit. That is truth. And sadly, Many people don't know what it means to be girded with truth. They think to be girded with truth is don't lie. And that is a very powerful point of it. But that is not the A and B of the truth. No, that's just a part of its nature revealing itself in your character. That you cannot be deceitful in your way of talking or acting. But folks, the truth is where you personally perceive, recognize and acknowledge within yourself the Father and the Son through the Holy Spirit. You live in that communion, like John says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. This, what we've seen and heard and touched, this life that is eternal, that was with the Father, but now was made manifest to us, we share with you. And our fellowship is truly with the Father and with His Son. John lived in the truth by the Holy Spirit, you see. He was girded about with truth. Oh, I so feel that power of truth and so long for us to live in that truth and to become girded by it. In other words, it contains you, keeps you, guides you, holds you. Mm. No, I will not go that direction. I will not think that, not watch that, not do that. It's the truth that guards you and keeps you and upholds you from deception, from things that would blind you and darken you. And listen to what it says here in 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know 
all things, verse 27, the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. You see, the anointing, that inward witness of the Spirit of Truth teaches you about everything to analyze it all, reason it all within yourself in relationship with Jesus. I know people wear this, this, this wristband and it says, what would Jesus do? And I know some people make fun of that and I understand all that, so I'm not being over religious here, but folks, I would like you to wear something like this in your innermost being. I have often, when I went through things that caused me suffering, had the Holy Spirit in me use that suffering of self where I would not have, not, you know, not, not experience or whatever, something that caused me pain. I would begin to have the Holy Spirit in me teach me about this and change my nature and change my character and change my whole demeanor where I learned to become meek with his meekness. Like Jesus says in Matthew 11, learn of me that I'm meek and lowly, that I'm kind. Meek is kindness, lowly, humble, and you'll find rest for your soul. Many times when it comes down to what you want or desire, if you don't get that, you have attitudes of complaining, you have attitudes of anger, irritation, you're, you're moody, moody, that's ugly. And it's all because your nature is not in that rest. You don't even know how to get into it. You don't even understand that it's available to you. You don't live in this rest. Stand girded with truth. So lastly, in 1 Peter here, and then we'll close this devotion for today. And I pray that you take these devotions and share them with people anywhere, everywhere. And, and whenever you can, support us in, in, the, in the costs that, that's involved. And God bless you in it, in all your love and all your giving. First Peter chapter 5, starting at verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfastly fast in faith, knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. It's not possible to live in this life here on earth, in this body, and not sometimes go through the trials that come along with the enemy's opposition against us living holy and us living in the truth. The truth has without question enemies. It has enemies. And some people get really angry against the truth because they live in the bondage of self-serving and the bondage of their desire and the bondage of their will and the bondage of their wants. And they don't know this rest. They don't know this freedom in Jesus. And they come against this truth. It, it hurts them even, it afflicts them because they feel they're justified in being so angry, justified in being so depressed and justified in being so moody because they didn't get what they want and their want is their master, not Christ. Their need, their desire is their master and not Christ. They don't know the rest of living in Him and Him in them. And to live with that can be challenging. And when you go through that, and the enemy is using all their behaviors to try to devour you, to try to destroy you, and you have to resist the devil and keep loving them and keep praying for them and keep comforting them and keep being good to them, despite that they're not being that way to you. I tell you, if you choose to live that way, then you will be perfected, established, strengthened, and settled in that truth of knowing Christ. 
and his love enabling and empowering you in no matter what you are surrounded by in this life like Jesus you abide in the truth amen have a good day